When we're moving back to Israel, in 2009, Israel was presented to the world as an economic miracle in the book Startup Nation. Four years later, Israeli startups are sprouting up all over the world. As Tel Aviv celebrates its annual innovation festival, I-24 News correspondent Shahal Pellet visited some of these startups, which have spread all the way to New York. As Tel Aviv Innovation Week opens its doors to representatives from over 61 cities in the world, the Israeli startup scene stretches its arms across the ocean. Silicon Valley is no longer the only synonym for startups, which have grown extensively in the past few years in New York City. I discovered that uh, the startup nation has roots not only in Israel but also in New York. Uh, I met a few founders of Israeli startups and I decided uh, to build a uh, a startup map and actually to create a community. In early 2013, Guy Franklin created a New York-based Israeli startup map, starting off with 56 companies. Ten months later, there are almost 200 startups mapped, and the number continues to grow. In the last uh, two years, Israelis uh, decided to come with the startups, mainly to New York, because New York become like uh, the main ecosystem for technology and, in and Internet uh, companies. Mainly focusing on ad tech and video, the small new companies usually settle in a hub, an open co-working center for entrepreneurial innovation. In WeWork, located in the heart of Manhattan's financial district, sits Afir Gutelson, already a startup veteran with a successful past, now onto his new adventure. Kipi is an app for parents uh, that is going to revolutionize the way that we keep memories. But it's actually a problem that as soon as the kids get off diapers and get a paper and a, and a pen in their hand, the problem starts, and doesn't matter if you are rich, if you are poor, if you, are, you live in the US, in Israel or in Australia, it's all the same. Launched four weeks ago, this playlist helps save children's mementos on a timeline and already has a 50,000 members community from over 90 countries. The case is different for Gilad Zirkel and Mark Fishman, whose startup Hyperactivate manages to put a value on tweets and Facebook posts. We've worked with a number of top-tier brands, and the reason why they're coming to us is because we're offering something that they, they have a, a very big need for, and they haven't been able to fill it in other places. Their clients include McDonald's, Coca-Cola and American Airlines, which collected fans and followers over the years in social media, but didn't know how to translate that into power. You have a mosaic of, of people's profile photos that's being assembled by tweets and Facebook posts. After someone posts about the product to his friends, his picture shows up in the mosaic, and the company's platform is able to identify revenue back to the person that tweeted it or his friends. Being a company that has its development and technology based in Israel and marketing in America gives the startup the best of both worlds. Not to mention, they get to enjoy what has become a standard in the startup world, playrooms and video arcades in the middle of the working space. These laid-back but hard-working startups also attract investors who see them as great early-stage and relatively cheap opportunities. Startups in the Silicon Valley are more expensive. They want to raise more money at the seed stage and the valuations are higher. They burn money faster, which is sometimes not such a positive thing, uh, so the mistakes cost more. However, the Israeli startups have more than just the ordinary risks, usually accompanying innovative initiatives. When there is a political situation in Israel, uh, it can stop the activity for the time that there is uncertainty. The Tel Aviv ecosystem continues its efforts to remain the runner-up to Silicon Valley and tries to attract worldwide initiatives, as the New York Israeli startup scene continues to bloom and will continue to do so in the near future. And Shahal Pellet is with me now in the studio. Good evening, Shahal. Good evening, Lucy. Thank you for coming to the studio. With pleasure. So is there a downside to the story? Yes. Well, sadly, I'm the bearer of bad news as well. Why? Well, <laughs> Israel desperately wants to uh, live up to its reputation as the startup nation. The 2009 book did wonders to uh, the uh, high-tech scene in Israel. However, uh, only the latest Google uh, study shows that Israel uh, falls behind other developed countries in uh, adopting new technologies. And uh, it says the reality, quote, doesn't match Israel's own national self-perception as a global leader in technology and innovation, ranking it number 24 out of 30. 
34 countries belonging uh, to the OECD in uh, uh, everything that has to do with productivity in uh, the technological okay. side. Um, Israel today hosts uh, more than 4,000 startups, 20% of them in Tel Aviv. Um, this changes by the hour, but there's no uh, incentive or special funding like there is in the UK for startups. And um, uh, not many entrepreneurs want to come and build their startups in Tel Aviv because of, uh, because of such things. Tel Aviv is trying very hard. It is an eff effective ecosystem for startups, trying now with uh, more co-working spaces and uh, Wi-Fi all over the city, for example. Um, but almost all initiatives are um, attracting now Israeli startups. There's very little entrepreneurs, foreigner entrepreneurs coming here. There's a lack of visa for startups, so foreigners can't come and work in Israeli in, in Israel in their startups. But that's a problem. That's why um, the uh, international 2013 International Cities Summit opens tomorrow in Tel Aviv, trying to attract, um, hosting more than 60 uh, cities all over the world, trying to attract entrepreneurs. There's going to be um, debates and uh, conferences and tours about innovation and technology. And uh, it's another effort on behalf of Tel Aviv um, to become the startup city it really wants to be. Uh, is, is it is it in the near future? Are we seeing any progress towards it? No, so far it's only Israeli entrepreneurs and Israeli innovation in Tel Aviv. There's still a lot to go. Um, this conference because we know is that a there, there was a big crisis in the high tech. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, once again, it's, it's sort of a, a peak, and <laughs> there are foreign uh, uh, startups right now in Tel Aviv, but you can't compare it right now to what's happening in London, in Frankfurt, in New York, in Los Angeles, where where, where the communities of startups from all over the world are expanding. Tel Aviv wants to be there. It's a runner-up so far. Shahal Pellet, thank you very much for good news in the future, I hope. <laughs> thank you very thank much you. for this. And uh, we're going out for a small break, two minutes break, and then we're back for the I-24 News Daily Debate. Don't go anywhere. Two minutes, and I'll be here.